What it do, YouTube, man? What's up, Jets? The boy here. Josh, back another video. Back another fucking reaction. Welcome back to my fucking channel. It wasn't supposed to end like this. Jimmy High Roller. We just got done reacting to um game for the NBA Finals. Like I said in, in, the, uh, in that reaction, I think Boston just let these niggas have it, bro, in my opinion. I think Boston just gonna go home. And whenever the game is, I don't know if it's Monday, I don't know if it's Tuesday. You know, the NBA Finals been having a weird schedule. But I think Boston just... We, we just finna go home and end them in our hometown, you feel, you feel me, end them at home so we can just, you know, have to pray everything. It could just be a bit, you know, you know, the little after party and everything. Nigga don't want to end that shit in Dallas. It probably would have been more lit in Dallas, you know, the clubs and everything. But they probably just want to end the series at home, in the garden. Not the garden. What's that shit called? Is that shit called? Garden? No, the garden is, that's New York. I forgot what that shit called. TD? No, it's not TD Garden. What is that? That is T I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't think that's the garden. I think the garden is New York. But you feel me? Just just forget I said that, man. But it wasn't supposed to end like this. Uh damn. It's crazy because a lot of people had Dallas winning. <laughs> hey, a lot of people were saying that shit, man. A lot of people were saying Dallas was gonna win. And Boston was like, y'all got us fucked. <laughs> Boston was like, y'all got us fucked up, man. Y'all boys tap in, you feel me? Like, comment, subscribe, man. Enjoy the video. Let's get to this motherfucker reaction, man. Let, let's see what my dog Jimmy Howard will talk about, man. Hope we're having a good little day, you feel me? Cool little Saturday. Appreciate all the subscribers, man. Appreciate all the subscribers, man. Appreciate all the subscribers, man. Let's get it, man. That lets let's, you get it. let's get to it. What I said. Celtics are having one of the easiest roads ever. Nowhere near anything all the time. And they are a super team. Come on now. Like, niggas was... Niggas was basically so... Like, uh. Help us, look. <laughs> Can you say something? Hold on. This nigga said Derek White over Clay Thompson. Drew Holiday over Draymond. Tatum over What? Oh yeah, they're they're A. Hey, A. Hey, I don't know who this nigga is, bro. But Buddy smoking some good shit. He's smoking some crack. He's smoking something. I don't know what Buddy's smoking. This nigga said, and this must be 2017 Warriors too, because he got KD. He said Derek White over Clay, Drew Holiday over Draymond, Tatum over... Nigga, do you know what the Warriors is doing to this team, bro? Like, nah, bro. Nah, bro. And then the thing with the, the Celtics, they get... It be some times where they they too inconsistent. They shots not... They not hitting their shots. Oh, missing open threes. Everything, bro. Like, they, and they just living down by the three ball. So you're telling me this team is going to match up with... The, Three of the greatest. Oh hell no! Nah, this nigga bucket. Nigga bucket. Can you say something nice about the Celtics? Uh, absolutely not. It's so. It's Celtics. So. Celtic, Celtic. Just go home. Get the ammo ready. Get the bazooka. Get the fifty cal ready. It's the NBA Finals, and you know what that means. A new champion will be crowned. Legacies will be cemented. The torch passed from one team to another, and some of the most scorching hot takes you've ever laid eyes on. Yeah, Today, that was stupid. We're gonna as take a look at some I'm of these takes. That was a dumb NBA take. Finals edition: the good, the bad, and the downright horrific. Probably <laughs> the best offensive backcourt in the history of the NBA in Luka Doncic. See, that's crazy. I'm gonna be honest. They. In the history? Today's video is sponsored by Factor 70. Easier to your door. Reaper don't have to. If you're taking calorie for boy is roller off your 50. A bit one sided. So far, the 2024 NBA Finals have been uh, a bit one sided. Yeah, and I with my rotten team on vacation for the last two months, I unfortunately have no dog in this race. Instead, I cope by watching other fans viciously duke it out while their team fights for NBA supremacy. And almost as entertaining as the finals itself are some of the takes and opinions that emerge from said duking. And here are some of the more interesting ones I came across. Now, our first take comes from a fan that says that if the Celtics win the finals, Luka Doncic should still be considered for the finals MVP. Yeah. Now, All right. My friend, 
I know you're in a tough position. Losing in the finals is not an easy thing. This is the play I was, bro, I was just talking about this play, bro. I'm like, bro, Luka really like that game three, he lost him that shit, bro. He really lost him that shit, bro. It was two plays back to back. Nigga did the same move on Jason Tatum, two plays back to back. Nigga did step back and both of them played oh and fell I both times, bro. Losing in the finals is not <laughs> And gave up points on both through. possessions, I mean, bro. Like, come on, fan, bro. I personally wouldn't know the feeling, but I assume it's got to be painful. But I do know where you're coming Thanks, from. Man, because yeah. LeBron's Whoa. my feeling, but I assume it's got to be painful. But I do know where you're coming from. Because LeBron's my favorite player, and I had to watch this. The 2015 Finals. If anyone tells you basketball is a five-on-five -five sport, they're lying. Because I had to watch this man get jumped 5v1 versus one of the greatest teams in modern times. Back. With Timofey Mozgov and J.R. Smith by his side, LeBron dragged this series to six games while averaging 36 points, 13 rebounds, and nine assists in the series. And Iguodala got it. Iguodala got finals MVP because they said he locked LeBron up. Nigga, and what? Watching Matthew Della Vadova nearly go into cardiac arrest trying to chase Stephen Curry around for 40 minutes, many fans asked the question, even if the Cavs lose this series, should LeBron still receive finals MVP? He's clearly the best player on the floor. The answer was no. And it will always be no. Instead, the award went to the man who was guarding LeBron. To give some perspective on how LeBron I'm gonna be honest, bro. If a nigga if a nigga averaged 36, 13, and 5 in a series, bro, uh, hold on, what he averaged? Hold on, what he averaged? I'm sorry, I gotta hit that again, bro. Cause if a nigga averaged that much on me and they give me finals MVP and he still dog me out like that, bro, I'm not I don't deserve it. Because I had to watch this man get jumped 5v1 versus one of the greatest teams in modern times. With Timofey Mozgov, I and I had to watch this, the 2015 finals. If anyone tells you basketball is a five on five sport, they're lying because I had to watch Facts. this man get jumped 5v1 <laughs> versus one of the greatest teams in modern hey. times. With Timofey Mozgov and J.R. Smith by his side, LeBron dragged this series to six games while averaging 36 points, 13 rebounds, and nine assists in the series. Nigga, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry, bro. If I was equal dollar, I, I, I ain't gonna count. I probably wouldn't even be able to accept the award, bro. A nigga averaged 36, 13, and 9 on me. And y'all gave me y'all gave me finals MVP because I was guarding him? Bro, get out of here, bro. What? Come on, man. Get out. I don't want that Matthew shit. Delvin. I'm gonna tell him just I don't want that, bro. He he he, he I'm a, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, I don't want the award. I'm a, I'm gonna be happy. But nigga average 36, 13, and 9. No, but nah, you got it, bro. You got it. Trying to chase Stephen Curry around for 40 Fuck minutes. Here, bro. Many fans ask the question, even if the Cavs lose this series, should LeBron still receive finals MVP? He's clearly the best player on the floor. The answer was no. And it will always be no. Instead, the award went to the man who was guarding Skip. LeBron. To give some perspective on how LeBron nearly single-handedly willed the Cavs to a championship in 2015, here is a breakdown of how much he was contributing to his team in that final series. By himself, LeBron Damn, accounted for 38% of the Cavaliers' points, 56% of their Damn. assists, 28% of their rebounds, 60% of the total points generated throughout the series, and was able to win two games. So far in the 2024 finals, I about to say. LeBron won two games too, bro. Luca, you've been putting up crazy numbers, bro, but you kind of been hurting your team at, in the series too as well, bro, defensively and just turnovers and shit as well, bro. Like, you've been hurting your team more than you've been really been helping them. Yeah, your team been playing ass. I'm not even going to say right here in the cap. Your team has been playing ass, but your, you, you don't have as worse of a team as LeBron had in 2015, bro, when Kyrie and Kevin Love went down, bro. So it was like, when niggas was saying that, I can't give it to Luka, bro. Yeah, he have an amazing series, but it's like I said. It's certain shit he doing that's, help, that's fucking up his team, too. Nigga had eight turnovers one game. And game three, like I said, nigga, he fouled out. It was it was possessions where, like, bro, Luka, it just seemed like you didn't like you was giving up, my nigga. It just seemed like you was like, fuck it. Like, nigga, fat, nigga, like I said, nigga did a step back two times in a row. 
and fail on back to back possessions. Literally trying to get a trying to get a foul call, bro. And in one of the possessions, Tatum got an easy fucking dunk, easy layup down down court, bro. Like like come on, bro. Like you can't single handedly makes up for thirty three percent of the Mavericks points. Forty percent nah. of the yeah, assists. Man. Nigga talking about he, he better than LeBron. And Fuck no. Forty percent of the total points generated by the team. It doesn't matter how well a player plays in the finals. You have to win it to even be considered for the finals MVP. The award is for the best player on the, the winning, winning team, team yeah. not just the best player in the series. And if LeBron's performance in the 2015 finals didn't warrant a finals MVP despite the loss, I'm not sure if anything ever will. Now here's a take for all the Celtics fans out there. This fan says that a championship for Boston this season would make Jason Tatum better than Paul Pierce. Now let me... I mean, uh, I can't, uh, I don't, I can't begin by saying Paul Pierce has become one of the most underrated stars. I, about say, I can't say that his bro. resume doesn't quite stack up to some of his peers of the 2000s, but Pierce was a really good player and a cornerstone to the Celtics franchise for 15 years. Some moments and opinions he's he had over the last few years have kind of skewed yeah, the public's perception on him, but that doesn't change how awesome <laughs> he, he was better than D-Wade gang. But with that being said, as an individual player, Jason Tatum is already better than Paul Pierce was. Tatum has a more well-rounded game. He's a much better playmaker, he's more versatile, and where Pierce Damn. really shined with his scoring and shooting ability, Tatum does even that yeah, at about see, the same better. rate yeah, see. Keep in mind, Pierce did play in the slowest era in NBA history, so his numbers don't quite do him justice. Adjusted for the pace of today's NBA, his numbers would look something like this really similar to what we've seen from Tatum throughout his career. But overall, Tatum has already peaked higher than Pierce did. He is a far better defensive player than Pierce was, yeah. and he's more versatile on both That's what I was saying. I mean, Tatum I didn't want to say he already better than Paul Pierce because I don't want to disrespect Paul Pierce, but I was like, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a question. Like, it, the nigga kind of already is better than Paul Pierce. No disrespect to Paul Pierce, but, but it's like, I just don't think, you probably were a better shooter than Jason Tatum, but all around skill set, I just don't think you were better than him. And I think he has done more in his what seven years in the league than you did your nineteen. Like I think he probably has more All NBAs. Like you feel me? Like I don't know. I don't really know a lot about Paul Pierce, bro. But like you feel me? Tatum already has ten times the MVP shares Pierce did in his nineteen year Damn. career. Individually, Tatum has been good enough for long enough to say that he has yeah, a bigger say, impact say he on is. a game-to-game -game basis than Pierce did. At the moment, you can still make an argument for Pierce being hey. the better player throughout Paul his Pierce career. Was tough, though. If the Celtics win a ring this year, and especially if Jason Tatum wins a finals MVP, then that argument no longer exists. But even without those accolades on his resume, I agree with this take. Jason Tatum is better than Paul Pierce was, and a ring this season would cement it. Now this next take came live on air during the Western Conference Finals, and fans are interpreting it in a few different ways. In the midst of going up 3-0 on the Timberwolves, Stan Van Gundy said that Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving are arguably the best offensive backcourt in the history of the NBA. They have two guys. That's kind of hard to say, bro. I'm going to be honest. It's kind of hard to say because you got Curry and Clay, bro. Like I feel like that's the only, that's the only back court, that's the only back court that can match up with this back court. I mean, you you've had other great back courts, bro. But it's like, I just think Curry and Clay might that that has to be literally the the greatest back court of all time, bro. They won four four rings together, well. both yeah, electrified, like just both electrifying, bro. Both can shoot the fucking lights out of the basketball, bro. Like I don't know. Arguably, the best. I think. The the splash bros at their prime, bro, in their prime, bro, is is a is a it's more of a force, more like if they're more lethal than Luca and Kyrie, bro. Just because me shooting all these threes and it, and, and they going in at a, a higher percentage, bro, is better than Luca and Kyrie. Yeah, they might hit Luca be going 0 for seven sometimes from three point line. Kyrie might go two. Like you feel me? Like I don't know. Threes is is, is threes are better than two. You get what I'm saying? Threes are greater than two. So I would go with Curry and Clay. Now Luca and Kyrie have only played about seventy games together, and this is their first postseason playing together, and they haven't really accomplished much in the grand scheme of things, and about a million other reasons why this sounds crazy. 
at first. But Stan wasn't implying anything about success or accomplishments. Yeah, just, just simply it. as an offensive duo, Luca and Kyrie might be the best backcourt we've ever seen. And if we're just talking about offensive ability, then there really aren't many backcourts that stack up against this one. Not that really. short list may include 2018 Yeah, but say Chris Paul, Paul Hall, and Curry and Clay Harden and Kyrie. If we consider Luka to be a guard, then surely LeBron, LeBron and Kyrie, Kyrie. 2017 Ooh. would be considered a backcourt duo as well. <gasps> Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker were pretty damn good. This fan might be onto something with his choice of the best backcourt <laughs> of all time. And of course, the two elephants in the room. That's why I said, bro. You gotta go. You gotta give the Curry and Clay, bro. If we ignore the accomplishments and the time these duos played together and just approach this from the aspect of offensive ability and production, then Luka and Kyrie are actually in the conversation for the best offensive Top three in NBA history. Top three. Taking the best versions of each of these backcourts throughout the years and looking at some of their numbers like points per game, total points generated per game, this statistic factors in assist to their total offensive output, shooting efficiency, and their offensive impact through offensive estimated plus minus, then it's pretty tough to choose just one backcourt out of these five. Luka and Kyrie are the most productive and they're just about as impactful offensively as these other backcourts. But once you factor in the shot making, scoring versatility, gravity, and all the little things that make a player special offensively that the numbers might not account for, then you could definitely make an argument that Luka and Kyrie are the most offensively talented backcourt in NBA history. Yeah. Now, as to how good they are, well then if we can't use accolades and accomplishments and this is just an eye test kind of thing, then that's pretty subjective. Steph and Clay were good enough to win four titles four, together, oh, but four. I guess you could say that as a backcourt, they weren't as good at basketball as the combination of Luka and Kyrie. Hard can you say that though, bro? Like, like, can I say that? Like, that's what I'm saying though, bro. Like, yeah, Luka and Kyrie from a skill set standpoint, they are great, bro, but just combined, bro, when I say the best backcourt, bro, like just Fuck, fuck them winning four rings. Fuck Curry and Clay winning four rings, bro. But I'm just talking about combined, bro. Just making the team better, bro. Just the the offense I can run with it. I feel like I can run a way better offense through Curry and Clay than with Luca and Kyrie. Like I feel like with Luca and Kyrie, it's, it's gonna be more of a. It's gonna still be like Luca still dominating the ball. Kyrie still dominating the ball. Like with Curry and Clay, I can run so much through them too, bro. Like I don't know. I still I. It's, it, I'm just thinking about like offensive schemes and just thinking about a whole bunch of shit, bro. I'm not thinking about just straight skills. I'm thinking about what I can do. You feel me? To like, I just feel like that backcourt with at, in their primes, bro. Like Curry and Clay, I just like it, it's different skill sets. Yeah, Luke and Kyrie, they can handle the ball. Yeah, they can. You feel me? Score at all three levels: mid range, three point line, in the basket, and everything. But I just think the the just the skill set the skill set of shooting, bro, that Curry and Clay has, bro, combined together, bro, the spacing that you have to like that they that they create just off their shooting prowess alone, bro, like the the the, the nightmare for the defense that they are, bro, because I gotta bring everybody out to guard Curry and Clay, bro, like. I just feel like that might be that they they're the greatest bad core ever. Really good at basketball, but they didn't really play together all that often. And it feels a bit wrong to not at least consider that within this discussion. Once you start to factor in what these backcourts actually did together, this entire discussion changes very quickly. But in terms of exactly what Stan Van Gundy was referring to, That's offensive tough. excellence, then Luca and Kyrie are in fact arguably one of the best backcourts the game has ever seen. Our next take I is one of the more unhinged takes I've seen recently. Let's not sugarcoat it. Jason Tatum has underperformed a bit over the last couple weeks. And coming off the heels of a Jalen Brown Conference Finals MVP, followed up by a lackluster start in the finals, Tatum's superstar label has been put into question. The peak of Jason Tatum propaganda? This right here. Fans claiming that Jason Tatum is an elite role player. The LeBron James of Tobias Harris's, if you will. And this take is missing so much context that I almost want to start rooting for the Celtics purely out of spite. Since I was gonna say like, I ain't gonna cap cut, that don't make no sense. <laughs> that don't make no sense. <laughs> like, that's why I'm looking at it like, girl, you can't say that, bro, you can't. I understand, you feel me? Sometimes he gets to the biggest moments and he underperform. But you can't just say this nigga's a great role player on a great team, cuz like what Tatum brains, bro, that's that's nah, cuz you can't say that, bro. That's 
you basically calling this nigga Malik Monk. Like, nah, gang. You can't call him a great role player on the like that's that's crazy, cuz like he might not be a superstar, bro. He might not be a, a, a star or whatever. You feel me? He might not be. He a star. That's what I say. Tatum is a star, bro. We try to give, we try to throw too much pressure on somebody so soon, bro. Like, like, like I said, ever since he came into the league, bro. Ever since he dealt on LeBron James, Boston made to Eastern Conference Finals, bro. We was already, you feel me, labeling labeling him as a superstar. We was already labeling Tatum as the the next man up. You feel me? The next face of the league. He he's not that, bro. Like no offense to Tatum, no offense to Tatum. He's a great player in his own right, but it is is I just I just think there's other players that are better than him in the league right now. You feel me? What he what he can be, what Tatum can be, is is two different things. You no, know, is is a it's a totally different thing from what he is right now, bro. Like the nigga could be a top three player in the league, literally just off his size, his skill set, everything alone, bro. The defense he can bring, bro. Offense he can bring. Tatum can be. A top three player in the league, bro, in my opinion. But it's just like I don't know if it's the if if, if it's the mentality. I don't know if it's just the a. Hey, I, I don't know what it is, bro. I don't know what it is, but Part of the you can't call this nigga which is Tobias Harris a role really player. Started to gain no. traction. Tatum has been averaging 26 points, seven assists, and 10 rebounds a game on 52% yeah, true yeah, shooting, hell while no. winning all six games. Those are all NBA numbers in the playoffs, and people are calling him a role player. Yeah, I ain't gonna in fact, you can't there see have that. only hell been nah. seven players in the history of the NBA to make it past the first round while averaging these numbers in a oh. playoff run. Oscar Robertson, Larry Bird, LeBron, uh, Giannis, LeBron Jokic, Luka, and Jason Tatum. A really, really good group of elite role players. Now, I will be the first to say that Tatum <laughs> has drifted into unwarranted territory over the last year or two, with some fans trying to jam him into the top five players in the NBA discussion when he isn't. He but not even top five. Thank you. He not. A subpar stretch of games, or doesn't fit the typical mold of high volume, ultra bucket getting superstars hey! we like to see. He is still one of the best players on the planet. Bro, I just think that I just think the thing with Tatum is, bro, you know what he's doing, bro. Literally, you know what he's doing, bro. He like. That's why it'd be so. I'm not gonna say it'd be hard for him to score in the, in the um, postseason, but it kind of do because it's like a, it's like the James Harden effect, bro. You know when James Harden got it, got it in his right hand and he hit you with a step back, you know he's shooting the ball. You know, you know the step back coming. You feel me? Like with Luca, when Luca put that bitch in his left hand, Luca go. He might not hit you with a step back, but he might hit you with a hezzy. Like you feel me? Like you know what's coming when he like with Tatum. You know when the ball in his left hand, he either gonna do a side step or he. You feel me? He's shooting the ball. When the ball in his right hand, he going all the way. You know, like, and when you know somebody, you know somebody offensive game, you know somebody offensive skill set, you know how to stop them, bro. Like, you got to, in the playoffs, it got to be different, bro. It got to be different, bro. Like, Luka still going to get his off because Luka is Luka, bro. Luka is just so phenomenally, he's just so phenomenal, bro. He just, it's Luka Dantes. And then he pounded the ball so much, you feel me? The ball always in his hand. So, of course, he might take 30 shots and still get 30. That might be inefficient, but, yeah, he's still going to do that shit. He's still going to get his 30. With Tatum, the ball sometimes it don't it don't majority be in his hands. They swing that bitch around. Like with Tatum, it's just Tatum just gotta have one of the nights. I, that's just I just came to the realization that Tatum, you just gotta have one of the nights. Like it, it, you just you're not one of the players where it's like okay, every night my night I can I can just take over literally every night when I step on the floor. You you you're supposed to be that type of player, bro. But I just think he's not. I just think he's one of the players where like okay. If 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 my team need it, if if I'm rolling, then that's what it is. But if not, then shit, I'm just gonna sit back, do what I gotta do to help my team win, and that's nothing wrong with that, bro. Nothing is wrong with that, bro. Like shit, I'm gonna be honest. If I was Tatum, I'd do the same thing. Oh, bro, like I would want to be the superstar. I want to be the star of the team. But it's like shit. If I got Persingas on my team, I got you all day, Derek White. I got Jalen Brown. Y'all don't need me tonight. All right, bet I'm chilling. I just play defense, grab rebounds. You feel me? I don't need to do shit tonight. I I, I would be good with that. In my Calling opinion. him an elite role player is hyperbole. I get that. But the less brain rot version of this argument is that Jason Tatum isn't a star in this league. And this is 100% nah, objectively wrong. He there is off. no metric or game or series or play that you could use to make this argument. At times, I too am not a big fan of the Celtics. This, however, does not send me into psychosis claiming one of the best players in the world is a role player. Yeah, I about this to say. This take is abysmal. But let me know what I'm gonna be honest. It'd be sometimes like, I'm not even not saying just I'm not even a fan of Celtics. It'd be sometimes I'm not even a fan of Jason Tatum at all because I'd be watching this game like, bro, what the fuck are you doing, bro? What are you doing? 
But I can't just sit right here and deny that he's not a great player, bro. He is a star for sure. He is a star. Superstar is different. Like, like I said, like I think I was watching Gilbert Arenas podcast and they were trying to break it up and they were saying like, oh yeah, it's a mega star. Do you got superstar? Do you got star? Like, nah. Yeah, I understand where it's coming from. Like a mega star, mega stars is LeBron Curry. You feel me? Them are mega stars, bro. Like I'm gonna be honest. In my opinion, Jokic might not be a superstar, bro. Like Jokic is a it's a great talent, bro. But just off, you feel me? Just me, like just him being, you feel me? What's the word? What's the word? Just him being. Uh, it was saying Jalen Brown, not what? Jalen Brown, not marketable. Just Jokic not being marketable, bro. Like yeah, Jokic, we know is one of the greatest hitters of all time. But his market, his marketability, like. Him like or in commercials and everything. You seen it now because of the group shit. You seen it like with the little hotels commercials and everything. But that's just that's just NBA shit, bro. But outside the NBA, you don't see Jokic as a marketable person. You don't see him in nothing. You feel me? Besides the group shit now. So if you want to be honest, Jokic outside of basketball would not be a superstar. He would not be a star. He would be a yeah. He would probably be a star. Yeah. He it's certain niggas like who I'm trying to think like a nigga that might not even be better than Jokic. That, that don't even have the accolades of Jokic. Or like like Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards outside of basketball is a goddamn superstar, bro. If you want to be honest, he's a superstar. Outside of basketball, he's a superstar, bro. But within basketball, he's a star, in my opinion. He's a star. He's not he hasn't hit the level of superstar level yet because he he hasn't, you feel me? Shit. He didn't beat Luca. He beat Nikola Jokic in the reign of champ, but he didn't beat Luca in the Western Conference Finals. He didn't, you feel me? Certain stuff you gotta do, in certain areas you have to get to. In the NBA, in order to become, you feel me, a superstar, in order to get to the next level, like nothing wrong with that. Tatum, you are a super, you are a star, bro. You can become a superstar, but you are a star right now, bro. But you still top ten for sure. You you better than Jalen Brown, in my opinion. Like niggas saying Jalen Brown better than him now. I think he I think he still got Jalen Brown beat, but it's just a uh, I don't know what it is with Tatum, but it's just a. Uh, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if it's a mental thing. I don't know the nigga personally, so I can't really say. And sometimes I just be thinking like he, like I said, he he just probably realized my team's so great. You feel me? I don't need to do this shit. My team, I have one of the best teams in the league. I got myself. I got Jalen Brown. I got Drew Holiday. I got Persingas, Derek White. He has a great team around him. Al Horford with Joe Mazzulla, who's a great coach. Everybody was dissing Joe Mazzulla, but shit, he turned out looking like a great coach. So it was like... Certain, it's probably shit. It's probably he be having his mom. I don't need to do what you niggas doing. I don't need to do what Luca doing. Cause shit, my team around me so good that I don't need to do all this shit. You feel me? Like, hey, nothing wrong with that. But it wasn't supposed to end like this, man. Y'all let me know how y'all think about the video. My dog, Jimmy High Roller. Another um, NBA Hot Takes video. Uh, let, me th let me know what y'all think about the NBA Finals. Like I said, I think the shit over with. Boston up 3-1. I know I'm not gonna say I know, but I don't I don't think Luca and Kyrie's coming back from a three one deficit. Not and it, especially not against Boston. And Boston, if y'all allow that shit to happen, y'all niggas is trash. In my like y'all niggas is trash, bro. If y'all allow that shit to happen, but I don't see it coming. Boston finna get the eighteenth um eighteenth ring and surpass the Lakers. But yeah, man, it wasn't supposed to end like this. Y'all boys tap in, you feel me? Like, comment, subscribe, and enjoy the video. We out my nigga. Peace. Stop recording.